So, hello everyone. The stream is working right now. So, today more Diablo I will be doing because it's still quite a lot of monsters to make. To do. Hello, Wukash. And now I only need, as always, to mute myself. Okay. Uh, so, for today, I guess I will be doing a fiend. He was randomized recently, and later I will uncover the number three. So, we will see how it will go for today. And just let me go in here because I have a fiend already placed. And the last time, if anyone missed, I did this guy. It was a burning skeleton. It turned out a little bit more cheesy than I expected him to turn out. But well, I guess maybe I will redo him like in the future. But, but yeah. But finally, something that is not a skeleton because I had like a three skeletons in a row. So I guess that's quite enough for today. There will be a mighty fiend. So as you can see, a really terrifying creature. I guess this is actually the weakest creature that there is. Uh, that there is in Diablo. Uh, I will hide the entire hub because I want to draw tanks. Because I want to draw in, in the full screen mode. So this way I can move this thing around. So yeah, as always, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. And if you don't have any questions, also feel free to mute me and just draw alongside. So all should be actually fine. And I thought maybe I will manage to make a little bit more of these guys throughout the week uh, from the last stream. But turns out I did not manage to make even one monster because had quite a lot of had had quite a lot of to do in the meantime but yeah let me try to just start with this guy maybe i will try to like place him on some sort of a like pillar or something like this to at least give it a basic interaction with the environment they do not really sit on anything while uh, they are in game but they could most likely since they are like this tiny flying creatures i can imagine them sitting on some sort of a pillar or something like this hello rock crafter so Today I will see how it will go. I feel kind of rusty, to be honest, because I have been drawing way different type of things recently. So not really that loose with everything, but I will see how it will go. I were to hold it. Let's go a little bit more like this. So I guess a little bit more sketching will be done today to nicely establish the pose of this guy. It's kind of funny to draw him again because I already done two of them. Earlier I did the familiar. I guess this is the tier three and the gloom. I guess this is the tier four. I think it is a tier four type of a monster. So it's kind of funny that not much variations, to be honest, is actually happening. I managed to like randomize the same monsters over and over again. So yeah. This one be a sketch in here. I don't really like the position of him. So let me try drawing this a little bit more from below. Nice. Let me check this out. 
then oh looks nice actually looks really nice and the file is huge whoops so this is done let me write it on the screen crafter that's the longest name 2k uh but yeah to be honest this looks really good especially all the lines everything is really clean and whatnot maybe only the stomach area could be a bit improved so like a bit darker in here because this area is pretty much whole covered in the shadow so so yeah i really like what is happening on the legs like the muscles are copied quite nicely the only thing is for this muscle it kind of looks like you don't necessarily know the shapes of the muscles because in here you have like this teardrop in here you have some tendons in here you also have like this teardrop and then you have like this muscle it connects to the pelvis and in here it kind of has this like weird looking split with actually the tendon and in here also there is like this longest muscle that kind of wraps around the leg i guess it also connects to the to the pelvis so in your case i don't really see this teardrop shape it looks kind of small and this one is also kind of wonky and this shape kind of disconnects from everything so i think this is like the only thing i would really rework on this one pretty much really similar thing is visible on this leg so yeah but definitely it looks way better than the previous one so yeah also a really cool reference bane is a really cool character also this is one of the things that i highly suggest to do pretty much for anyone if you are going to like draw any type of a character from the reference at the beginning i highly suggest it to be a really bulky and muscular character because this way you will actually be able to learn some muscles so it's easier to learn anatomy and everything if you will be drawing like superheroes and whatnot instead of like casual humans etc yeah i guess it comes with time so now i feel the urge to sneeze oh shit but actually to learn how to look at the references this is the skill in entirely entirety of for itself it kind of takes time to be able to identify what is actually happening on the reference i remember when i bought like the proco anatomy course like really back in the day several years ago when he was like talking about oh and here you can see all the muscles and whatnot i was like i have no idea how you can see it but i do not see anything for shit and it just comes with the practice it was just all about trying to like redraw everything and drawing over and over again and at some point i started actually seeing what was happening in there so yeah hello Nikolai. i mean the anatomy is important but it's not that important at the beginning uh, it's really easy to like go into this like kind of black hole i don't know the better word for it uh, with the anatomy to stress too much about it because if you only like have the really general idea on what is happening or what are the main muscle groups then it's more likely enough because really rarely you are drawing anything that requires a really solid understanding of anatomy usually like vast majority of things are in armor or covered or something like this pretty much like arms and a bit of chest and a stomach usually is visible so these are like the areas to study the most that will be that could be most beneficial uh quads to be honest is a really rare opportunity to to draw 
Uh, yeah, Victor is asking about the geometric approach for the characters. I actually might do it with one of the sketches to start it with because it's not that hard of a thing, I would say, but there is a way. Uh, hello, Victor. At the moment, uh, the other Victor, at the moment I'm using mostly brushes for these guys. Uh, usually when I'm painting anything a little bit more complex, like just for myself, I usually use some sort of a uh, photo textures and everything, like whatever gets the jobs done, I will use it most likely because I simply like using photos and everything. So, so yeah. Now I kind of want to get the, he kind of looks like a Batman with this pose. Get like the general feeling for it. But to talk about the geometry, let me just talk on a, like an example of this guy. Uh, basically what I am doing um, with the geometry is I'm trying to imagine a shape. So for example, a leg is a cylinder more or less that is kind of like changing the geometry. Let's say the knee is a sphere. And then I'm only trying to imagine what is actually happening with the shape in the space. So basically this is only like rotating a really simple solids. Uh, just trying to like remember what they are made of. So like, for example, the heel in here, what is like the basic shape for it. And I'm simply trying to kind of combine all these pieces together. Usually if you start uh, with drawing, using stuff like this, like using uh, solid geometry, most likely you will end up with something that looks really okay but it might end up being kind of stiff. So I do not necessarily start with drawing with solids. I kind of keep them in mind, but I don't like really to be that restricted with them. Of course, sometimes when I do a drawing and I feel something is really off, then I will like make an overlay layer like I do right now, where I kind of test the geometry um, because sometimes it's actually okay to like to verify what you are doing. But the long story short is, and the long story short is, I'm kind of trying to like keep it a little bit more loose. So this way I kind of know what actually is happening. So let's say the spine, maybe the neck will be a bit more in here and the spine will kind of go maybe like this. And in here there will be a pelvis. So basically this is the way that I approach doing this type of things. Uh, hello, coffee. Uh, so yeah, this is basically the way I, I do these things. And sometimes when I just simply draw this type of a sketch, sometimes I do not necessarily care if it's like perfect in proportion. Sometimes you will simply like make one leg longer, one leg shorter or something like this, just for the sake of it looking better. Uh, because in the end, we just want to make it look good. Really often I like stumble upon artworks of a really like top tier guys. Uh, and those artworks have some weird like looking mistakes in geometry and perspective. All for the sake, for example, of showing a face or something like this. So if I were, for example, to draw this guy purely with, for example, something closer to the boxes, like a really organic boxes, let's say. As you can see, I can really easily like manage to draw, for example, the rotation between pelvis and the body, because now I want this guy to be a little bit more rotated. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much all. And with drawing this type of a stuff, as I said, I don't really like stress that much about it being really perfect. I just want to have like a general idea of what is happening with with the body.
and the more perspective he will include in it so the more i will like create a perspective grid the proper perspective grid and whatnot most likely the better it will look but with those sketches i don't really want to like go really over the top with everything i just kind of want them to be a little bit more loose a little bit more fun to actually do i don't want them to be too hard to make later most likely they will get way harder because when i randomize for example a blood knight or a steel lord or a monster that is basically the cooler looking monster then i will try to make him or her look as good as possible but at this point like for familiar for example i won't really care that much i would say what i really also like about them is those huge rib cages i guess i will try to kind of like amplify the rib cage but definitely the thing that i want to have in here is a little bit more interesting pose so it won't be as boring i don't really feel him like sitting on anything i guess most likely i would prefer him to be a flying monster Let me only search for some sort of a reference for the wings. I need to actually like take a week off just to draw wings. I say this over and over again. Hello, Jakub. These guys look really cool. They are a bit dark, but I guess I will manage. <laughs> Whoops. Yep. And the head should be way lower. I kind of want the head to be like sitting really deep in the chest for him to be a little bit on this more compacted side of the body type let me make the legs smaller because if you are like a small demon that is mostly flying most likely you do not really use legs that much yeah, to be honest with anatomy, I also have like a really long way to go. I only scratched the surface uh, of this topic because like anatomy can be kind of easy if you simplify it enough, but it's extremely easy for the anatomy to get like extremely complex. And I really feel like I still have a really long way to go. But it's fun, like I mean, with every drawing that I do, let me search also for another reference, with every wing and every monster that I do, I slightly increase the level cap, so if something is giving me problems, then, then I know it is okay. Oh, actually this guy has extremely cool looking wings. It's a little bit overkill for this small guy, but... The shapes are really nice. I also don't want him to have like this really wide looking wings. Kind of want him to be a little bit more compressed, so like a square size. So it will look a little bit more okay -ish on Instagram and other pages. I think I will go with something similar to this one. I don't really like the legs. So let me redo them. I kind of want 
the silver to be a little bit more hunched back, hunched forward, and the head to be a bit bigger. What is also cool with this type of a monsters in terms of learning anatomy is you don't necessarily need to make it like really perfect. You can kind of like change things on the go as kind of as you feel because there is like no one who would really tell you that, oh, this muscle cannot have this shape and everything because like of reasons with the monsters, vast majority of the things that you do can be really easily justified so you can really play with the anatomy with different shapes and whatnot and make it look a bit more cool and just by making it a little bit more cool and not trying to like make a perfect anatomy in the beginning it might be beneficial to actually learning this type of a stuff let me give him like this this double jointed leg this one will have to cover his crotch area I kind of feel the silhouette is really similar to the ones that I did previously so let me only open open these guys that I have done previously and where they are I had a folder with all the Instagram okay I found it this is the first one this is the second one so let me just have yeah this is why I was trying to change it because now it's pretty much identical to this guy in terms of a pose so hmm maybe i will pose him like this but it's kind of too similar shit i really like this sketch okay so let me remove this one Plug the background and up to the side you go. I guess also this is as much as you can like think of while drawing this type of a guy because like well this is a really simple concept I would say. But actually when you are drawing anything the pose is really crucial or it can be really crucial because it can tell a lot about the character that you are trying to portray so coming up with an interesting pose is a really important thing i was for a really long time neglecting it i kind of felt like you can like draw almost everything with the t-pose and it will look okay i mean if something will look okay in the t-pose then most likely it will look really good when while it's posed but i kind of changed my mind over the years and now i kind of feel like the pose is really important to make it cool also victor piepurka if you are still here uh, i have a different video where I am actually drawing all the characters and whatnot uh, using the geometry, like studying some human figures and everything. So you can also watch that one because I kind of elaborate a bit more on the topic of the geometry in the human figures. as leg and legs are a thing that are constantly hard for me like my brain is having a really hard time to process how the leg kind of connects to the pelvis 
always gave me some different weird troubles. Oh yeah, I need to see. I think. Yep. Mm. Uh, to be honest, I had close to none time to work on anything that is related to Gamma Root or anything. I firstly have to finish a different tutorial for a Chinese page and I kind of had to have to finish some like commissions type of a stuff. So to be honest, most likely, uh, I mean, I shouldn't even like make a live stream right now. I should be working, <laughs> but I guess I will just take a small break and later come back to work. Uh, because I have quite a lot to do at the moment, but I guess like a small break for two or three hours to draw some like small monsters will do me well. I kind of like this awkward looking pose. Uh, I mean, not a tough time with rendering because it's not that easy to set it up, but as many different artists on a YouTube say, media encoder is shit. I don't know why, but they say it. I never like encountered many problems with it, but with rendering like eight hour long tutorials, it actually gave me some troubles because after like six, like around the rendering seventh hour of a tutorial so more more or less it was like two or three hours of rendering in total it told me like okay i won't do this i cannot do this and when i was like why it was like i just can't i was like okay sounds like a valid reason to not render something so i would say it's more likely some instability issues or something like this because I usually try to render everything in 4k I don't really like rendering anything below 4k even the live streams I like to make in 4k and it is kind of troublesome for quite a lot of softwares to process it correctly because the files are just huge like way way bigger than for example when you just try to render in like 180p so i guess this might be a problem and my hard drive i kind of feel like it will fail on me like it will die on me soon because it's like making weird nose noises for quite some time already and recently it noticeably slowed down so i also needed to make like a backup of everything because most likely my hard drive will soon die Yeah, for the studying human figures. Now I kind of don't really care what type of a like body type I'm drawing. Like I simply enjoy it for just for the sake of drawing. But with the cultists, cultists, uh, culturists, the the nice part is like you actually can see a muscle that someone is talking about. So, which is nice actually. Because yeah, yeah, four K is cool. But to be honest, I don't know if like the standard will switch to four K, and then some people will try to render something in eight K or even higher. It will be a really hard time for artists to keep up with the videos because like this shit is rendering quite for quite a long time, and. A lot of artists are kind of like weak in terms of like this technical aspect of everything, how it's working. So it might actually be like tons of problems for the like artistic part 
of YouTube to keep up with it. But yeah, especially since the GPUs are not really that available at the moment, so. Increasing the time speed with just simply giving it a little bit more power is not an option at the, currently. Kinda like the idea of making this monster like have this like blobby head type of a thingy happening. So we can wink we go through here and in here in the perspective. I kind of feel with the wings like I am kind of doing the artistic background impression instead of like actually painting a wing that would kind of work. So I don't really feel this is the right way to do it, but whatever makes the jobs done. That give him like this dumb looking horns. What I always liked about designs like this is actually using those like simple things. Like actually now, while everyone is kind of trying to make the most original designs out there, everything is over complicated, like really over complicated. And sometimes like this, the easiest things are really overlooked. Ooh, I actually found a really cool reference for the wings. And also this is the pose that I wanted to have. Actually, this guy kind of looks like this guy. This is the pose that I wanted to have for this guy. So turns out this is a really nice thing to have. Let me search for something cooler on the wings. This one looks really cool, also. I don't know why, but as I said, when I draw wings, my brain just shuts off, shuts down. Like I have a really hard time imagining anything cool happening with the wings. Might be a cause because I really like everything to be like really properly drawn in perspective and whatnot. But it turns out it might be sometimes impossible, so let me just try adding a wing like this and down to the side and to the back. I mean, everything is really similar to each other nowadays. Everything is too epic, everything is too polished, everything tries to kind of look too good like everything must be epic flashy and whatnot this is also like a really nice thing that i always liked in the old games uh, especially in diablo 1 recently i was talking with a friend of mine about it when while well, actually a portal for example a town city portal is just like a blue circle and that's all and when you actually see like a red circle portal you are like whoa that's so cool and whatnot, and in a lot of like games that are produced right now, every VFX is really over the top. Like it's unnecessarily complicated, and it sometimes kind of look like it's just for the reason of making it look cool. But in this like weird, uh, really complex manner, so. I don't kind of know how to feel about it because I like I really like things that are flashy and whatnot that just simply are looking nice. But I don't really feel this should always be a case like for every single like thing. Like this wing look like like this. It's a bit too short. Let me make it a bit longer. I sometimes feel like a lot of artists now, they kind of try to 
overcomplicate something really simple just for the sake of making it look cool and they kind of forget about the purpose of of some things even like with stuff with the basic monsters and whatnot like what is really cool in Diablo 1 and about Diablo 1 is when you encounter like this shitty fiend it actually looks like a monster that is basically like made to die pretty much and when you actually encounter a monster that can like royally fuck you up then you will know this is this type of a monster it is especially like visible in the Belzebub mod because like the author of the mod really increased the stats for the monsters so something that used to be dangerous back in the days now is like 10 times more dangerous so made by R. I am not sure what you mean but this is made by our director or artist like the things about the flashy thingies and whatnot if yes I mean like kind of both I would say mm, but I wouldn't also blame everything on the art director or the artist because sometimes a client just wants this type of a things and like if the client is actually the one who is paying and he or she really says that it must look exactly like this then like you really like then what what you can do you can try to educate the client or something like this but really often it will like lead to pretty much nothing so i wouldn't say this is a fault of an art director or or artist sometimes it's like just a thing that happens well too many for example people are working on one one thing or when someone who actually makes a final decision uh, is not really someone who let's say has like a highly developed taste in different things like it's kind of hard to say say it what i mean to make it kind of a bit easier to understand is like flash is okay but not always everything needs to be over the top this is kind of the point that i'm trying to make and even with the things like for example the gothic the new gothic the the remake that they are making of the first part i guess like what was cool in the gothic series was that you basically was like the lowest type of a shit that you could be in this like mining place i don't know the the english name for it uh, and basically before you manage to kill anything like stronger than a mole rat you really had to go like a long way through the game throughout the game and in the new like in the new version or in the remaster or something like this uh, basically at the beginning you are fighting with this razor heads or razor tails something like this basically with the monster that will like just mess you up completely in seconds in the original part in the original gothic and it's like meh like why do you try to make everyone like a superhero at the beginning of a game it it's not necessarily a bad game but it's really hard to pull something like this off especially with for example the ip that is really established already like gothic is in poland it's like in poland it's really established so yeah but that kind of depends also one of the things that was really interesting when i was like kind of listening to some podcasts and whatnot uh, was that the fact that pretty much almost everyone can become an artist nowadays like basically what they say is like you don't need a degree you don't need anything uh, like official education portfolio is everything that matters um, but the problem is uh, but the problem is with this type of a thing that sometimes someone who is hiring is not necessarily an artist himself and my fall in the trap of like just looking at nice pictures and then someone who actually is only capable of like making nice pictures 
for example, will get hired somewhere. I don't say it's a bad thing, like more power to them uh, because they managed to like find a job. But it kind of may, may end up uh, with the things that someone who is not really a designer or a concept artist, but is an artist, is designing something. And sometimes it might lead to some problems with everything like looking together nicely. Because they can, for example, only like produce a really nice illustration that is beautifully rendered, but they don't necessarily can grasp the bigger picture of a project or something like this. And I have seen those type of things happen over and over again, like many different times. So, yeah. Personally, I don't really believe in this. You don't need a degree or something like this. It won't hurt. Definitely, it won't hurt. Sometimes it's not a necessity, but I would rather, like, for example, personally, I would rather hire someone who has a degree, but is slightly, like, like has a slightly worse skill than someone who has, like, a better skill, but do not have a degree. But mm -hmm. this is just my personal opinion on it. Really hard to say. To be honest, it really depends. You will find a concept artist who are really good and who do not earn uh, as much as they should. And you can find illustrators who like are doing a really like, normal, let's say, type of war artworks that they are not really crazy and they will like end up crazy amount of money. So it's really hard to say. Generally speaking, I would say concept artists will have a bit more stable job because if you are a concept artist somewhere, then they will like basically keep you forever or they will try to keep you forever. If you are an illustrator, then it might be a bit harder for you to like have a stable type of a job. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily and uh, the like concept art type of studies uh, like to get a degree in concept art or something like this uh, what i was what i meant was for example i would prefer to have someone who let's say finished architecture or something like this or industrial design or graphic design because most likely even if their projects were not really that great most likely they will have quite a good understanding of the design so they will kind of know how to for example evade a lot of different problems and they will be able to think a bit more with this like let's say design thinking which is really hard to like learn just by yourself you kind of need to have someone to to teach you this type of a thinking and personally for in my opinion because like i graduated in industrial design this is also my kind of be biased uh, with it because I don't want to for a degree to like go to waste because it will be just dumb of me um, but I would say easily without uh, the Academy of Fine Arts I wouldn't be even close to be where I am after finishing the studies because like maybe they were not teaching me how to draw monsters or how to design like a dungeon but the general knowledge of design and everything was extremely helpful and I don't really see a way to learn it just by myself. Of course you could if you are like dedicated enough, but the vast majority of people won't be. So mm. yeah. Splash art for League of Legends are really cool. I really like them back in the days. Now they are kinda too identical for me. Like, I know they have to be kind of unified, but back in the days I felt like they were kind of experimenting a bit more uh, with the illustrations. And at some point they were also making those videos, those process videos. And it's kind of funny to rewatch those videos because like back in the days I thought like, wow, this is like the top tier godlike level of art. And now, for example, if you find like a Diana, old splash art or Maokai, it's like, wow. This is extremely basic. And they they came a really long way through. Yeah, maybe. 
I'm not sure what type of a Mr. Dark you mean about like Tresovnik, the Darius Valchak or who? Because he was also a guy who who used to teach me like really back in the days when I was just starting. Recently, I also got a memory on Facebook where it showed me like my drawing from 10 years ago and I was like whoa I remember like making it and it was like 10 years ago it was kind of crazy yeah the, this these are good artworks still but they are nowhere near like to the things that they have like nowadays yeah, to be honest, like uh, at uh, Mr. Dara classes, I was like so extremely long time ago, I don't necessarily remember everything that he was teaching about like design and whatnot. Uh, but definitely he is extremely skilled guy. He really know how to teach. He really know how to approach a student. No, uh, Tarek Darius Walczak. He has a school of drawing uh, in Manhattan, in Gdańsk Resch. It's called Rysownik. Like for V, it's Darius Walczak. Uh, and I used to attend his classes, like really back in the days. Yeah, it's kind of funny because quite a lot of like friends of mine from the Academy of Fine Arts when I like were still studying uh, were attending to his courses and pretty much uh, like everyone knew who I was because I was like leaving a lot of artworks in there and he was like showing them pretty often and it was kind of awkward at some point because when I was like talking with someone, I was like, hello, my name is Eric. And then we were like, oh, you are this Eric from like the Rusovnik. And I was like, okay, this is now kind of creepy. And yeah. yeah, but it's, as I said, it's kind of fun. Also, definitely a great teacher, I would say. I do not like... Uh, I miss the word. Wait. No, I do not regret like attending his classes. It's nothing to regret. Everything was fine and dandy. And later when I like decided to like move with the skills forward I went to Domin in Warsaw because like it just felt like a next step to kind of also get a different type of uh, information from like different teachers and whatnot and it also was like one of the best things that I have ever done because in Domin basically I learned vast majority of the things that I use today um, but yeah Let's see how this guy is going. This is also one of the things that I only do because I guess YouTube wouldn't like me to draw some dongs of demons and whatnot. But I never understood why a monster need to have like this ash or like this cloth on his crotch i cannot imagine a single monster that would actually care about like not being naked especially if you are like a small flying demon uh with the talent this is like a really long discussion I wouldn't say I have a natural talent when it comes to drawing. In this manner, I would kind of say 
for the amount of work that I put into it, I would say I am an extremely slow learner, but it might be because I am not really, for a really long time, I was not really studying properly because I was like gaming a lot, watching movies a lot. And I was, for example, really not sketching that much. Actually, the, those guys are like my longest like uh, strike of sketching something like constantly. So it like really gives me a solid like upgrade in my skills. But for the talent, I would say I have a I don't have a talent in art. I have a talent in sitting on my ass next to a PC or piece of paper and just sitting and drawing because I simply enjoy it. So if I would ever say that I am talented somehow, I would kind of say just I am patient. I just can sit on my ass and do what needs to be done. And I kind of understand what it, what it kind of takes to get better at art. Uh, so... I would only say in, in this manner, I am kind of talented. But again, it's a really long discussion about the talent. In Domin, for example, there is this saying that the talent does not exist, that only hard work really matters. But then you will like see someone who is like 14 or 15 years old and like even if they would like to, they had no like possibility to draw constantly for like years and years to come. Uh, years and years to like back in the in the past. Like simply, there is not enough time for them to develop the skills that they have, and sometimes they will simply like, be outstanding artists. So, I would say definitely there is something like a predisposition for art. Some folks will simply be better at it from the start because they will like understand it in a better manner. Maybe they will also have like way better teacher or something like this because like having a good teacher also like basically means a world for someone who is trying to learn. So for example, in my case, I had great teachers. I can imagine having better teachers because when I was like, looking around the web and everything how different people approach teaching sometimes i wonder how my skill cap like how my skill will look like if this guy and this guy and this guy uh, would teach me but i got what i got and i'm like happy with it so i wouldn't say i would change anything if i could i would only i'm kind of interested in how it will end up so more like a curiosity from my side and sketching uh that depends sometimes when i sketch i usually absolutely do not give a fuck about anything that is happening around me i just simply sit for the sake of drawing and enjoying myself like just now i'm like not actively trying to make something extremely cool or to learn anything in particular i know what i kind of want to do with it i know kind of how to achieve it so I simply just stop and draw. But for example, in this case, I always had some problems with displacing of an arm. Uh, so I know later when I will be like studying anatomy, so just drawing poses, I will like focus more on this setup because it's weird for me. So let's say, let's say, let me find a reference for it and I will show you what I mean, maybe. If I find a good reference for it. Or better, as always, if you cannot find a reference, just make your own. Because this is like the easiest way to actually achieve something. So let me just take a photo of my hand really quickly. Okay. Um, but also when I'm drawing or sketching or learning or anything, I like to listen to music. Uh, I like to have some sort of a noise uh, happening in the background. I don't really like working in the complete silence. 
but sometimes when I really focus on something, like accidentally, there is a way for me to not even notice that I am like drawing for like seven hours or something like this, and that I was working in a complete silence. Sometimes it happens, so yeah, but for the stuff like this, this these are like the small things. So for example, in here, without the photo, there is like no way at all that I would like see this shape. I will invent like this type of shape. No, this one is Redmi Note 8T. It's actually not even an expensive one. It was like one of the cheapest on the page. And that was kind of a huge factor for me to take a phone because I don't have like a good luck with phones or I, I used to have a really bad luck with phones. But this is like typical Redmi. Well, for me, I was never fan of an audiobooks, but I also never gave it a try. So it's hard for me to say that I don't like audiobooks because, as I said, I never gave it like a proper attention. So... This one, but as you can see, this finger do not really fit the rest based on the reference. And I really like having those small bone in here, having this bone in here, and this like meat happening in here. Bit more happening here, and the whole arm going a bit more this I used to have Samsung's but for me overpriced and really under delivered type of phones like really I have no idea why people are praising Samsung that much I had like it really back in the days like the Galaxy S3 I guess and it was not a bad phone but after like half a year it was like shit to put it like lightly it was like lagging not working properly it was just a bad phone that's all and a friend of mine once told me to just buy xiaomi or xiaomi or i have no idea how to pronounce it not polish language uh, and since then i have been using xiaomi because it simply works it looks nice it, it's not overly expensive but yeah it's just a, like a great piece of technology, I would say. Actually, let me remove this whole hand. And for those demons, I want them to have like four fingers because they have like a limited brain capacity so there is no way for them to use all five fingers these are the lowest tier monsters that are also the dumbest also let me represent it with the amount of fingers that they these guys have Yeah, to be honest, just go with whatever you feel like. At the moment, with the thing that you picked, it looks really fine. So I won't necessarily like worry that much about the things that you should do. Just continue doing what you what you were doing, and you will be fine. Just move those legs. So here there will be a bit of an ass, a bit more of a leg, a quad, this funny long muscle, quad shape, and boom. An ugly leg is drawn. Now the terror of a knee. Just need 
tendons, tendons in here. It can be, to be honest, it's also a really great topic to develop your skills on. Whatever gets you going is, to be honest, really fine thing to make. And if we talk about legs and us and everything from the story, like life story type of thing is, a friend of mine convinced me to start running and whatnot. And after running for two days in a row, or like 30 minutes or something like this, now I kind of feel like my ass and legs will explode. I don't remember when for the last time I was so sore as I am right now, especially since I was like running. I was never running. I always didn't like to run because it always seemed to be a little bit tedious and kind of boring for me, but he convinced me it's cool. And now everything hurts. When I walk, my muscles are sore as hell. It hurts to move a body throughout the space. It's kind of funny feeling because I really like to be sore and whatnot, especially on the legs, because then I know I have done something that is like worth, like this is the pain that kind of reminds me I did something like worthy of having pain. But because of this pandemics and everything, I forgot how painful sore legs are and how unpleasant moving throughout the space is. Yeah, and this was the, the magic who is in the chat by Yayu. And actually, maybe tomorrow I will also I will go to run with a friend of mine. Maybe magic will also come. So we will see. But yeah, running is kind of fun. Or at least I'm trying to convince myself it is fun. Maybe my brain actually despises it. But I will see after like a month if I still enjoy it or if I do not enjoy it at all. So yeah. At the moment it's, it's okay. It's always kind of funny for me when someone who like I know from the times of my youth like come to the stream or comment my stuff on Facebook in the language, language, in the English. And when I always like, when I talk to them, we talk in Polish language, it always kind of throws me off a bit. It's like weird, weird as hell. I have no idea what will be the anatomy of like a double jointed legs. Yeah, this is also one of the reasons why I kind of want to get a dog, like, in the future. Uh, because I simply want to... Oh, there was a dog. Oh, no. Because I simply want to have, like, something that will kind of require me to move. And I feel having a dog is a really good thing to motivate myself to actually move a bit more okay dog leg leg uh, so I'm definitely not familiar with the anatomy of the of the dog's leg, but what I get from it is a lot of shit is happening in here, a lot of small tendons and whatnot. This bone will be really pronounced and in here there's something that looks kind of like a calf. I guess I will just fake it. 
I will fake the legs. Yeah, see Rockcraft. Nice for you to step by in here. Really appreciate it. Make. Yeah, sometimes when we used to go for like the vacations and everything uh, into like a small town next to the Gdańsk and just for the camping in houses, I don't remember the word for it. Uh, sometimes the nights were extremely bright, basically with like the cloudless skies and everything it was bright as a day to be honest sometimes you could like really clearly see everything even deep in the woods every shadow was extremely crisp and long it was like a really weird thing to experience especially since in cities i believe the night seemed to be way darker you are like for example in the forest because you kind of have like this context of the city lights being on all the time so yeah it is kind of yeah the guy kind of looks a bit better now kind of start liking the way he turns he looks so. And now for the wings. Actually, the wing anatomy is one of the weirdest. I usually when I see something that kind of makes sense, is when the wings are connected to the scapulas, or around scapulas, or near scapulas. This is like the only place that actually kind of make any type of a sense. To where I know my references, I want to have them. Boom. Yeah, but for like just jogging and walking, um, the I wouldn't say I'm old because I'm not even like close to being thirty. I'm like twenty six now. Uh, the more I kind of feel like the need to actually move myself, to move actually somehow. And this is also one of the reasons why like convincing me to start running was so easy, because I was kind of missing a lot of movement, especially since the gyms are now closed. So running is kind of an interesting opportunity to force myself to move anyhow. Actually, also a wing could be like a, another set of arms, kind of connected to deltoids and trapezius behind it. I will kind of make it like this. Flap of skin in here. To simply add a little bit more volume to it. But yeah, Boom. long things, things, the easiest way to approach it is to actually draw it however you want, simply just warp it, because then you will get the thickness that you kind of want to achieve with the Photoshop tricks. Let me make the wings a bit worn off, worn out. Mm. 
Yeah, it starts to look kind of okayish. Yeah, but definitely running is kind of fun. The only problem that I had with it to this point is the fact that I only have like a headphones. Like I have two pairs of headphones, one on the Bluetooth and the second one on the wire. And both of them have only one headphone working and this kind of sucks. On the other hand, what is cool about it is the fact that I constantly hear what is going on around me. So there is no way, for example, any type of a like boar or anything will attack me in the forest because we have a lot of boars in the forest. So at least I will be aware of the fact that something is running at me. But the problem with it is it's really hard to focus if only one headphone is working. So I will kind of need to like have it reward, kind of like make it work somehow. So some solid DIY soon is incoming, is awaiting for me. Like smaller. A ginder. Some like metal circle in here. I don't wonder what will be the next monster. Originally I had a plan to make like three at the same time. But I guess I will wait with this idea when I actually finish everything that I have to finish for my commissions and whatnot. And then I can make like a six hour stream when I will try to finish three monsters at the same time. Nice. The fact that you are writing in here kind of suggests that you survived the attack. But yeah. Yeah, well, the boars in the place where I live are not that big of a problem. They will kind of like tear the, the grass or something like this. Or just dig some holes. But, but I would say to some degree I feel like they are domesticated a bit. Because they are not really afraid of humans or, or whatnot they just walk around like nothing really happens and they don't seem to be like bothered by anyone by anything more or less this wing should go like this and also about speaking the geometry this is one of the ways that i would approach it so this connects to this this connects to this this is, let's say, the body plane and direction, direction, perspective to the top, to the top, perspective. Okay. So the previous wing will be a little bit more in the back, which is okay. But do I like it this way? I do not like it this way. I will force it to be a little bit more outside. Whoops. So the one wing will be slightly with a different angle. Or generally. Mm, so. Down, up, from here. With the raccoon I have only like a bad memory from a meme about how stretchy an ass can be and what big of a hole can a raccoon squeeze through and the comparison that it is actually possible. And after I learned this information I was like, and this is the only thing that I will associate the raccoons with. But I even wanted to have a raccoon as a pet. But it turns out you can have a raccoon as a pet. But also it turns out they are extremely demanding as pets. They are really attention like needing and everything. And you really need to care about them. 
but a lot of like owners of raccoons say it's kind of like you will get a mix of a like three-year-old baby uh, a cat and a dog with some splashes of pigs because also this miniature pigs that you also can have a pig like the miniature pig in your house which is also a really popular thing i also wanted to have a pig but it turns out as with the raccoons you really need to take care of the pigs like extremely you need to you need to take like the extreme level of care of pigs so i don't think i will be getting pig anytime soon But yeah, I always like, uh, like, let's say, unusual animals, in a sense. Like, if you can say unusual for a raccoon, but have a raccoon in a house, it kind of is an unusual type of an animal to have in the house. Okay, we go in here. Hmm. Also an interesting choice, but for the chicken, I guess in the long run it will be way too annoying for me. Like I guess I would like to have an animal that you can kind of teach, for example, where it should like do certain things. And with the birds, the problem is they will basically fly and shit everywhere where they can so I don't really see myself like trying to clean everything up after my chicken or something like this it will be way too ambitious for me to do okay the base drawing is done now let me rework the line weight So basically what I want to make now, what I want to do now is to make sure that every single plane reads nicely, that the geometry is readable. And one of the coolest way to actually achieve it quickly without any problems at all is to work on your line weight. So I usually try to make the lines a bit thicker in the area where I expect a shadow to be, because also later it will kind of help me to naturally shade the whole the whole drawing because i will have a better understanding of what is in front of what where the geometry touches and yeah nice yeah i mean the the chickens can produce a lot of eggs but it's still less than i expected the chicken to produce when i was reading about it it was around two eggs per day, three eggs per day. I might like completely lie at the moment, but this is the numbers that I remembered. But I don't remember it being like a really crazy number. I expected a chicken to make like seven to eight eggs per day. But the thing that was kind of weird for me, that kind of surprised me, was the fact that uh, chickens, um, before they lay, lay egg, eggs, they have like a pouch inside their body and maybe not a pouch but they have like a part in their body which is filled with the egg yolks and everything before they like kind of form a shell around it and it looked kind of creepy to be honest and this was the more you know type of a moment when i discovered it let me search for it mm. Yeah, so basically, e e e e. Mm. let's say this is like the accurate drawing, but there is this place 
on the references was I have no idea what is happening, why I cannot like rotate. Okay. Uh but this is the ovary and there are like egg yolks in here. It was kinda creepy for me to actually learn this thing. But yeah. Well, I was never like a huge fan of chickens, like as animals, they always seemed kind of dumb and not that interesting. There are some like fun species of chickens that look kind of wacky and interesting, but overall it's not an animal that I really like in particular. Most of the wings, let me connect those layers. Time to work a bit on the face. Soon it will be a time to actually add a simple shading to it and then to add a color to it. What is really cool about these guys is the fact that Photoshop decided to crash on me once again. Mm. Mm -mm. Wait, Photoshop kind of crashed on me. Okay, here it is. Oh no, I see how long this guy is. I want him to be a bit shorter. But the fact that I really like about this monster is that they are actually red. They are like the small flying devils. So it will definitely be a thing, an interesting thing to color because. I really like making monsters with like a really clear and easy to understand and to remember colors. I also want his body to be a bit shorter, so there will be some overlapping in here. But definitely red is a nice color for this fella. I really wonder what will be the next monster. All the queue that I have to, to make. I hope none of them will be another skeleton. Nah, the, the one that run out are the fallen ones. Like these guys with spikes and swords and everything. These basically just flap around with the wings and just die because they are kind of they like basically cannot do anything else. I'm not sure about the statistics, like the official statistics and everything, but I believe this one is actually the weakest monster in the entire Diablo series, like from the pers from the statistic point of view. The fins are the lowest of the lowest tiers. They are, I guess they are even weaker than the fallen ones. Especially in the game, I never encountered any, like even a boss of these monsters, of these guys, that would like give me any type of trouble. Like even with the light enchant and whatnot, where they spew like lightnings everywhere, even then they were extremely easy to beat so i strongly believe these are actually the weakest monsters in diablo series okay so like last 
touches in here and soon I will need to add like a solid black ink spruit. So yeah, let me turn off this guy. No more thickness in lines in here. For the arm and hand. And boom. The drawing more or less I would say is kinda finished. I really like the face. That it looks like this kinda dumb. I want him to have some like problems with the liver. Yeah, the Kazra demons are really cool. Like the, the hybrid monsters where you kind of have like human mixed with an animal were always like monsters that I really enjoyed. Like drawing and defeating in any type of a games. So yeah, the, that's true. Kazra are really cool. Okay, so for the shadows, this will be in a deep shadow. So now a little bit more of a graphic design part of this drawing where I actually block out the shadow shapes. Boom, 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 boom. In the horn, my cast, like the small shadow on the face. Huge part of the arm in here will be in shadow. And also the shadows are one of the most important things to add to your painting, I would say, or a drawing or anything, because they will like greatly determine what type of a volume you can read. But the problem is when you are doing it in a way that I do them, it's really hard to decide where you actually want like a pure blackness to appear to kind of not overdo it or to kind of not kill the entire drawing like with this like too much of a deep shadows so this is a part that is really tricky i would say because sometimes when you have for example an abs amps sometimes a deep shadow will appear actually in here on the chest area and under the pecs and whatnot, and in here under the chin, but it's really easy to like overdo this type of an effect. Because in the ideal world, all the shadows should feel really connected, like together, like they kind of belong, like they create like one complex shape. But as you can see, even now, it's kind of hard to decide where I want the shapes to appear. So I was thinking to maybe just shade him without making like this deep black. So for example, in here, as you can see, almost the entire like wings are really dark and like half part of this guy are and, like the really dark values. So I guess I will try to keep it kind of consistent with like, the initial idea. For example, in here, some serratus muscles will kinda like give those deep shadows. The bottom of the hand definitely will be in a really deep shadow because it's kind of facing downward. The bicep area. Kinda wonder about this whole wing in here. Yeah, it should be in the deep shadow. Say the same thing happening here. And this is what is really like a huge advantage that you have in Photoshop uh, when it comes to drawing, like when it comes to inking, if you compare it to traditional medias, because in traditional medias, if you like mess up the inking process, for example, as I did like seconds ago, it's actually a terrible problem to like rework an inking process. It will require like the and a holy amount of like stuff to do to actually 
rework but inking. So in digital media medias it's really forgiving to a point where it can kinda even feel like cheating I would say. Because I basically do not need to worry about anything for this guy in particular. Do I want the wings also to be like black? As I did with these guys. Not necessarily. I kind of want them to have like this cool texture. Actually the texture of this brush kind of reminds me of the brush that Kimium Gi is using. Like it's creating this kind of like you would take a pen and like smudge it with a finger. Kind of gives the really similar feeling. Like similar quality. I'm not sure if I am familiar with Igor Volsky. It to ring some bells in my head, but I'm not sure if I know the guy or if I follow his works. Yeah, but to actually, this is also one of the reasons that I why I decided to draw these monsters instead of paint them, is because I kind of feel like drawing is a like I'm not saying painting is easy, but I would say drawing is actually harder because you cannot like, there's no way for you to kind of fake something. You either know how to draw something or you don't know how to draw something. In painting, you can do a lot of like interpretation and everything like to leave a lot for the viewer. I guess in drawing you also could do a really similar thing, but I feel it's a bit easier to do in traditional medias. Uh, not the traditional medias, in, in drawing, in painting. It's easier to do, Jesus Christ. My brain cells just lagged. I heard about it, but I don't know any type of any of his works then. With the comic book artists, my knowledge is really limited to like the pretty much total basics. Like with the comics, I only know like basically Marvel and pretty much what I know. I, I wouldn't even say I know it, like I am aware of it. I know there are some comics like Torgal and, and whatnot, and also Glenn Fabry because he made like a book about drawing and painting and I really like this book, I still do, but I would say about the comics and everything, I'm not a really knowledgeable person. For a brief period of time I wanted to actually make some comics and whatnot, but it turns out I don't really enjoy drawing the same character over and over and over and over again in different positions. Yeah, I will check him out later, definitely, after the stream. It's always good to know new artists. Okay. I'm making a little bit of a different approach for this guy, I usually started with blocking the shape of it and then kinda like shading him, but now I kinda feel like using this brush to kinda emulate like the pencil shading type of a thing is, is working a bit better. Has this nicey like texture quality to it. And since the style 
of these guys that I'm making is constantly evolving, I guess I will try to like experiment with them a bit more. And also a really cool thing with this type of things, like with experimenting like this, is you can really know your tool because now I kinda know that this tool is capable of the things that I thought are impossible for it to be because it's a really rough type of a pen uh, of of a brush. And that is not really, I would say, that easy to work with. But this type of a texture that it leaves right now is extremely good looking, I would say, personally thinking. And I don't really enjoy like having those those wings being completely black. Feel they should be darker, not not black. Okay, let me like plot the shape of this guy first. Now. Close. And this is definitely a monster that I would even like to have in black and white. Now I kinda don't even want to like color him, but I guess I will have to. I want the opening here. Sometimes finding the opening in the line art is a really hard thing to do. But actually, okay, the ear is opened. Yes, I got it. It's also a really cool thing that I learned quite some time ago to simply like use the eraser and check the. What? sample all layers and then it simply allows you to like remove everything according to the line art that you have and this is like a bastard crazy method to work with but i really like how it kind of turns out at the moment now you can see that it needs a bit more of a deep shadows in here for these parts of a wings to like pop out a bit more so this is all about the shadows what not the leg and also this is like a reason why you should always like work on a different stages of your painting because only now i can kind of see where i can add a bit more black to the whole drawing or a bit more race basically where i need to like rework it slightly because i have a richer context of everything that is happening around so let me duplicate it just to work on a duplicate let me connect it connect this guy and i guess the Photoshop again has some problems with displaying with displaying the image. So thanks Photoshop for like making a good job on working. Unbelievable. It always baffles me that they with each update they manage to like make the program work even worse than they used to with like the basic shit happening like the tablet pen not working the display not working anything not working i remember like really at the beginning of the studies when i just started 
learning stuff at Academy of Fine Arts. I was like a hardcore Photoshop fan. I really like the software. I felt it like I still think it is the best out there. But now, like the amount of problems that the software has with itself is amazing. I need to add a bit more us for him in here. And the deeper shadow in the eyes. And for the wings to be darker, I would like make a black mask for them. And simply, I even kind of like them when they are like almost dark. I want to change the opacity for it. And maybe slightly play with the texture. Nice. Now remove the lines in here. And let me do some coloring because overlay in I will try to add a bit more light to the volumes, maybe not put in the twenty five. So this way it will look a little bit more like three D in a sense. Because I want the light to be like from the left top part of the screen. So this way I can actually like bring a lot of like pop, a lot of geometry out of the background. And one of the things that I really like doing is to actually create a new layer. I guess I will like, have to do it later, but to make it a bit darker from the top, to make it a bit lighter from the darker from the bottom, lighter from the top, and to simply like add it for like 10%. So it kind of causes the whole thing to basically pop out a bit more. Yep. And now for the coloring. Bring this back, guy back. We remove this one, this thing. Uh. Mm. And for the coloring for pretty much every single demon that I used to make in here, I used gradient maps, but this time I will try to actually just use some brushes and whatnot. A really cool trick to add a different variation to the color is to actually turn on the color uh, color dynamics in here. So for example, the saturation, you can see it will greatly change how the brush stroke leaves the color. So it's, it looks kind of more interesting, I would say. And now the only proper thing, as far as I know, or as I'm concerned, to add a color is by actually changing the blending mode to multiply. This is what a friend of mine taught me. For the wings, I can imagine them being a little bit more like bluish in here. Also for the claws and for the legs, so there will be some variation in the color. This is the basic idea. And for the eyes, I can imagine this guy having like this hellish red eyes. The problems with the multiply layer is that it is extremely dark. So I need to level it up for a bit to 
actually give it like a solid brown color for the cloth. Because I don't really want the monsters to be too much overpainted. I kind of want them to have this simple type of a render on them. I not necessarily want to spend like hours and hours trying to render them. Let me try some tricks now. Also, this is a cool part of the Photoshop where you actually know what you are doing with all the sliders and whatnot. You can really quickly add like different lightnings to the whole drawing and whatnot. So for example, in here, just by using like the same layer that I had below, I'm really able to really quickly add tons of light to like the whole character and overlay looks a bit better. As always, work on the duplicate. So now for the basic render, I would say it is kind of finished. For the eye, yeah, but I don't want to make the the file transparent itself I want it to have like a solid color I kind of feel like the opaque type of a texture will also work fine with this guys so let's see what the outer color would say the contrast outer tone oh the outer tone version is actually really cool like this fleshy it's way more fleshy I really like it, and if I set it to color, I even like it way more. All these bluish hues happening. Yeah, I like him being like this. This actually looks way cooler. And this is also why I usually use this type of like auto color, auto whatever type of thing is because most of the times auto color actually recolors the artwork in a way that I really like. Yeah, I, to be honest, I kind of start doing each monster in a little bit more complex manner than previous ones. Even if I said that I do not really want to do it, kinda like, I guess this is the natural progression for it. It's really hard to not render something if you really enjoy it. Especially since like this style, let's say is not that hard. Because it's still like mostly work on the line art, on the line work and everything. But yeah, that, that's right. I really like those those type of things and this like cold highlights, I would say. This is also one of the things that is extremely characteristic to the way the a lot of Chinese artists are working. They usually have this like really like characteristic type of a light setup that they do like everything is kind of like lit with this like bluish hues and everything yeah most likely because as i said i i'm not really a type of a person that used to like sketch every single day because i like always have like a purpose in drawing and painting but recently after like listening to quite a lot of different podcasts i felt like i was kind of like overthinking a lot of the things and i felt like just drawing for the sake of just drawing without it making any type of a sense is a better way to approach it because 
it's simply very more pleasant sense. We can just blow in here. Especially since recently I discovered, like rediscovered the channel by Steven Zapata. Actually a really cool channel, like not only because he makes outstanding art, but he actually has really good points in his videos. So if anyone is wondering about a good podcast, Steven Zapata is definitely a guy to go to listen to. kind of like recently kind of influenced a lot of the decisions that I made because simply of the way he approach the works take this brush and what kind of annoys me about the fact that I'm kind of like making these monsters more complex with each one of them is the fact that at some point I will feel like the older ones are not like good enough to combine them in a single file. So I feel like that I will need to kind of rework all of the monsters that I don't like. And it will end up in me like doing this challenge, let's say, for the next 10 years or something like this. Because I will constantly try to improve everything. Uh, I guess, I mean, at least the monsters are cool enough for it to be a good thing, I think. Because as I said, the monsters in Diablo 1 are, in my opinion, extremely cool. I really wonder how the last monsters will look like because I wanted to like kind of compare how they look after like redrawing everything like trying to redraw the first one once again to just see if I improved in any sense but I kind of feel now it's already looking better than it used to which is nice really like this hand this blue hue is extremely nice and since i usually try to like cap these monsters on around two hours i guess i'm getting close to the finish I guess the time will be like my hard limiter on how much I can like work on a single monster. Only the Steel Lords will get like a special treatment because I want the, spe the Steel Lords to actually be the best drawings in the whole series. So I really enjoy them. Oh, I need the horns and these guys need to be also blue. And also sometimes I think a color really shows you where you kind of like messed up the, the lightning, like the rendering of the forms. So as you can see, like this wing was really dark in, a, in an area where it actually should like get a lot more light in the begin with, like a lot of more pink stuff should happen in here. Also, I really like the fact that the demon is kind of now a little bit more pinkish at the moment. 
instead of like just being red. I kind of feel like this is the more like believable approach to the color for a monster. Kind of like whatever, add some like bicep veins and whatnot. And a bit more of this bluish hue on the body. The dots. This nice looking vein on his cheek. Actually, veins are, I guess, like the coolest detail that you can include in a monster to make him look like, to make it look like immediately better. Because, like, this is like this the triari type of a detail that is really often overlooked. And it actually really makes a difference when you add a lot of cool looking veins. The character, it kind of ties everything together. Especially in the areas that you don't really care that much about. For example, like in the legs and whatnot. It's a really nice way to tie everything together. Also, the way that the drawing kind of looks now kind of reminds me of the drawing that I have done for the Artist Bena project. Like when I was drawing traditionally and then did like painting digitally on top over it. And uh, the quality of the finish is really similar, which is kind of nice. I really enjoyed doing that, guys. So I guess I kind of started finding a ways that I really enjoy working. This is always a good thing to have. Also, usually they say the hands should be like the second thing to be the most like, hard worked on after the face, because the hands are the second thing that usually vast majority of people are looking for while talking with anyone so in here you can see how i kind of ignore them for the whole part of this drawing and now i'm kind of trying to add a bit more light to them hands are usually the hardest part for me to draw on any type of a given character and i kind of want to Bring those colors a bit down. Yeah, so I guess this is the familiar. I guess this will be the end for it. I will only make like this adjustment layer. As I said, to make the bottom part a bit darker. I don't even think I would set it on yeah, set it on overlay. It kinda does does it. No, I wouldn't even set it for the overlay, but like only make it a bit darker. And I guess maybe I will like make the global like this pinkish layer for it to get a bit more light, but in a like really delicate manner, 10% max the overlay, not mid tones, but highlights. Simply introduce more light to the silhouette and to add like a small highlight on the top of the head. Uh, so yeah, I guess this will be all for for today with this guy. I don't think I will continue working on him anymore. I guess this is. Only let me just rework this area to make it a bit thicker. Uh, 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 uh. 
so yeah this will be the end for this little fella and i have to say i really enjoyed him i was not expecting him to be that much fun to begin with i see some places that could get improved like mainly on the for example the neck area and everything and here i could like try to work a bit more on the light and whatnot but I will just leave it as it is and I will keep it for the next monsters so even the cool thing is if I compare how this monster look to the first one that I have done since they are kind of kind of similar I would say Let me... well I'll just make this guy a bit bigger now I kind of see the silhouette is almost identical to this one so I think my brain capacity is really really low for this type of monsters even if I compare how they look like turn everything off only find the fat demon in here I guess visually it's a bit of an improvement oh yeah it was cool so let's say let's see uh, what monster will be next in the next stream and now there will be a number three so let me remove the number three and let me uncover the card what will it be <sighs> another skeleton ah fuck me okay so i guess i I have not escaped the skeletons at all, so let me place him in here, at least this one has access, but it's still a skeleton, so, <laughs> okay everyone, thanks for watching, in the next week I will be making another skeleton, so more anatomy lessons and whatnot, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments, feel free to write to me on the Facebook page or whatever, and this is pretty much all thanks for watching everyone and i hope you enjoyed the stream or that you were drawing alongside with me so yeah that's pretty much all and goodbye